you rarely get a second chance to make a good first impression, and it's almost impossible to overcome the snap decision that people make about you. So that's why it is so important to nail your own introduction. And that's what I want to go over because if you are a creative person, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a business owner, how you present yourself to the world matters a lot in terms of who you can connect with and the opportunities that come your way. Because if you aren't even comfortable with yourself, other people aren't going to be comfortable with you or giving you opportunities. So making a good introduction is step one of many to success, but it's the most important place to start, which is why I wanted to make this video with you. So stick around. We are going to be covering a lot of ground on how to make a great first impression. Hello, welcome. My name is Jonathan Pritchard from iCanReadMinds.com, and I have been in front of 19,000 audiences. I usually say something around 15,000 because it's a nice round number, but it's really more like 19,000 audiences since about 2006. I used to work at Universal Studios. I've been on tour as a full-time performer. I've been a corporate consultant and keynote speaker. So I have been introduced and introduced myself to millions of audience members and people in autograph lines and in every day when I travel. I introduce myself to folks behind the ticket counter at the rental car place and Everywhere I go, I love meeting people. So introducing myself is the best way to get the ball rolling in the right way. So I used to do this the complete worst way possible because I am intensely introverted and I used to be shy. To me, those used to be the same thing, but they're not really being introverted is about how I recharge after my batteries are kind of low, and shy is all about a set of behaviors that is highly antisocial. It's kind of by definition, I prefer to not be social. But all success, everything I've gotten has been the result of having a conversation with people that I can help. And without that solid introduction, I don't get to have the conversation. I don't get to figure out how I can help the person that I'm talking to. So I've had to learn the hard way how to introduce myself in a, in a solid way that gets people comfortable to talk to me and they wind up oversharing and telling me all sorts of stuff that I don't need to know and uh, probably should have legally been obligated to share some of those details with authorities. But, you know, I'm too busy to worry about other people's information. So if you have trouble introducing yourself or you're uncomfortable in social or networking and business settings, this is for you. And we've already touched on it. We kind of have already seen a couple different ways how to introduce yourself. And first, I want to talk about the physicality. And that's kind of what I mean by being shy is a set of behaviors and actions you take or not. So your physicality is kind of step one. So if you tend to be kind of reserved and your shoulders rolled forward and you don't like to face people and you just rather not be bothered, then this tells people, I don't want to be here. I don't want to meet you. So if you want to make a good, solid impression and and be seen as warm and inviting, face people, face them, and full square face the person, and decide whether you're a hugger or not. If you are a hugger, the hands come out, you're like, hey, how's it going? If you're not a hugger, you can still have your shoulders rolled back, your chest out, and then you turn to offer your hand. So your hand is kind of between you and the person who would otherwise try to hug you. So your hand is kind of there as a defensive measure and you can offer the handshake that way. Me, I prefer the high five. So I sign most of my emails with high five and I like leading with that because it is very obvious what's about to happen because as I'm coming this way, 
the high five is happening. It avoids the hug. It's not as as uh, formal as the handshake, but the the high five can be a lot of fun. A super secret tip, if you are a high fiver, look at the elbow of the other person and you will always stick the landing with the high five. Don't look at the hand, look at their elbow. And for some reason that works every single time. So that's the the physicality is really just open up to the world and be comfortable being who you are and where you are. And that will go a really long way. The other thing is to speak with confidence and to be comfortable saying your own name. A lot of folks speed past their name. You've heard it since pretty much day one. You've said it a lot. Your parents used to say it. You've heard it from teachers. You hear it from your friends. And you are so familiar with it that you avoid giving it the space and attention that it deserves. So oftentimes it'd be like, hey, my name's Jonathan. And if I would mumble it and I wouldn't say it, it would just kind of fall out of my mouth. And that is not pleasant for anybody to experience. So take the time to really present yourself and show yourself the respect to give it the space to really present yourself. So you say, hi, my name's Jonathan. And you say it confidently with a smile, like I'm actually happy to be me. And you might be happy to meet me once you get to know me. So slow down, it'll feel awkward at first, But if you really take the time, you'll find that people remember your name more and they're not wondering, did I miss it? Was I just spacing out? What's going on? I I didn't catch that. And now you've put them in an awkward situation because they don't want to feel like, oh, no, I didn't hear their name. I wasn't paying attention. They're going to think I'm a horrible person because I didn't catch their name. So they're secretly thinking, oh, they're going to think I'm awful and you are wrapped up in your head of, oh, how they're going to think I'm awful. And it's all because you just didn't take the time to slow down and to present yourself slow enough for the other person to meet you for the first time. Now, the next detail to think about is context. Know your audience. And there are kind of three different places where you wind up introducing yourself the most. The first is in a social context where you're meeting friends or just some person when you are out of the house, out of the apartment, going about your day. In that case, all I usually do is say, hi, I'm Jonathan. And I might even add on a, hi, nice to see you. And it's very short to the point, but it's warm and welcoming. Hi, I'm Jonathan. Great to see you. And the really important detail is to give first what you expect to get. If you want to know what somebody's name is, try to avoid saying, what's your name? It's just kind of like, give me, give me. I, I want what you have. Give it to me. And that that feels very aggressive and rude. But if you expect to receive their name, give your name first. And I do that everywhere I go. I like to think of it as I'm a professional at meeting people and I enjoy meeting people. So I'm going to do this first to show them that it's all cool and they're meeting somebody that knows how this goes and that will put them at ease. So I don't wait for them to introduce themselves. I'm usually the first to say, hi, great to see you. I'm Jonathan. And we can handshake or high five, whatever feels natural. And that's how I do 99.9% of social interactions. The second environment is kind of in a business casual situation where you are networking or it's just a touch more formal. Maybe this is a business function after hours cocktail party or something like that. And you might be meeting people for the first time. 
And if these are people who could potentially hire you or engage your services, if you are a freelancer, a creative, a graphic designer, web designer, or any kind of service that helps businesses, it's your business, even if it's just you, I still want you to think of yourself and what you're working on as a business. And also, I have a whole video about why you should make a a business out of what you're doing. Uh, I'll try to link that wherever that goes. Anyway, if you are working with folks or you're meeting people who might be able to hire you for what it is that you do, put that in to your introduction. And for me, it looks like, hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm the founder of Zavant Enterprises. We have a whole bunch of services that help companies improve their sales, negotiation, and presentation skills. So a lot of that kind of training and a lot of events management stuff too. So yeah, I, I help folks that do a lot of events make more money in less time. So that's very short, but it's very formulaic. It is Hi, I'm Jonathan. I help perfect clients to accomplish a goal they have, make more money or whatever, without bad thing happening, whether it is wasting time or money or having frustration or anything like that. But that formula is magic. Hi, I'm Jonathan. I help companies make more money at events by doing sales, negotiation, and presentation skills training, especially at trade shows, right? It could be something like that. And in that case, they're hearing exactly who you help, how you do it, without that thing that they're worried might come along with that. Like, oh, I bet I can't afford it, or, oh, I bet this is going to be too long, or it's going to take too much time. And if they are your perfect person, they'll go, you just described me, or... I, I'm not that person that you're looking for, but I know somebody who is exactly who you need to talk to. So that little elevator pitch, that formula will make you so much money if you learn how to say it naturally and make it feel like it's just something you're saying, but practice it a lot. Practice it so much, so much. So then... The third environment is a more formal environment. Say if you are on stage or you are a keynote speaker or speaking to a small group, you're at a Kiwanis Club meeting or Chamber of Commerce and you are trying to get connected to your local business owners community. Uh, In that situation, you can expand that very succinct formula a little bit more so that you can say, hi, I'm Jonathan, the founder of Zavant Enterprises. I help small business owners that exhibit at trade shows with sales and negotiation and presentation skills training and lead generation in the booth. I've worked with clients like BP, State Farm, United Airlines. I've even even worked with the United States military, been all over the world doing this kind of fun stuff. And I am really excited to connect with you. So you want to put in a little bit of social proof of, okay, what are some case studies? Who have you worked with? Uh, it's, it's just kind of like if you're an actor and you meet people and you go, I'm an actor, the thing they want to ask you, whether they do or not, it's on their mind. They're going to go, have you been in anything I would recognize? What movies have you been in? What TV shows have you been on? And they're that's their way of asking themselves, is this somebody who's legit enough for me to care about? (laughs) So do them a favor, do yourself a favor and lead with some of those big name clients that you've worked with. And in whatever honest way makes sense, you can say, I've recently helped a client make two more million dollars a year in one trade show. So you don't even need to name who the client is but you can highlight what you did for them and be able to quantize the results that you deliver for and with your clients. So make sure you put that in there and share something relevant to your audience so that you're answering that question of 
who is this person? What do they do? And should I really care and pay attention to what they have to say? So put that all in there and that will help you out a lot. Now, I said three environments, kind of casual, business networking, and on stage. Then actually, you know what? There's a fourth one. We'll, we'll tack this on. And it is through media, broadcast media. Maybe you are on a podcast or you have a YouTube channel. Then there are some special considerations that you have to take into account. And in most of my videos, we did it Earlier in this video, I always say, hi, I'm Jonathan Pritchard from ICanReadMinds.com. I specifically chose that URL because it is awesome. It is perfectly on brand because I do a 70-minute mind reading show that has taken me around the world. And the psychology that makes that show work is exactly what I teach my clients how to do at trade shows and conferences and sales and all that kind of stuff. So I want part of my introduction to be the easiest way that you can get in touch with me. And I actually do want you to get in touch with me because I want to hear from you. That's why I do all of these videos. That's why I have this whole channel is to meet cool people like you. So go to ICanReadMinds.com, find your favorite way to get in touch with me, and then reach out. I want to hear from you. But the the reason why I chose ICanReadMinds.com, that's not my main website. It is my main website for broadcast medium because I don't know if you are actively watching me right now. I don't know if you're paying full attention to what I'm saying or you're like, all right, there aren't a whole bunch of fast cuts. There's not a lot of animations, but I'll listen to what he has to say. And I'm in some tab way behind whatever it is that you're doing right now. If that's the case, you know how to spell ICanReadMinds.com. You don't know how to spell Jonathan Pritchard. Nobody knows how to spell Jonathan. They spell it Johanathan. They spell it Jonathan. All sorts of ways. I spell it J-O Nathan. Joe Nathan Pritchard. Good luck with that one. I have seen that misspelled every way under the sun. I used to have JonathanPritchard.com, but I let that lapse. Somebody grabbed it and they've been sitting on it for years trying to charge me $10,000 for, for my own name. And I politely declined that offer. So that's why I own jonathanpritchard.me now. But nobody remembers that it's .me. They always put in jonathanpritchard.com and then they go, oh, I guess his website doesn't work. And then they leave. So for all those reasons, I specifically chose a URL that is easy to understand, difficult to misspell, easy to hear, interesting for you to ch go check it out and be like, I wonder what's at ICanReadMinds.com. Okay, that's kind of cool. So that ties into your branding and marketing and positioning in the world that you live in. When you're on that podcast, when you're on your YouTube channel making a video, have a succinct way to introduce yourself with the best way for people to get a hold of you. And for me, that's why I always say, hi, I'm Jonathan Pritchard from ICanReadMinds.com. And today we're going to blah, 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 blah. Right? So... You, however, you wind up introducing yourself, feel free to practice it, introduce yourself to the wall a whole bunch of times until it just becomes second nature. At first, if you use a formula or a script, it will sound scripted and then you'll be like, I don't want it to sound scripted, so I'm not going to use it. So instead of not using it, use it so much that you hear it in your sleep and then you'll break through from it sounding scripted to, boy, that sounds so natural and like you just made it up. But I guess he must have done that 19,000 times for it to sound that smooth. So 
there you go. There's the big picture on how to introduce yourself socially, business casual, on stage, and in broadcast media, uh, like podcasts, YouTube videos, even on the radio or the morning news. I've been on the morning news to promote my show, and I always like to be prepared to introduce myself properly so that people will listen to what it is I have to say. And to that end, if you are still here, fantastic. I'm impressed. Thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind, give it a like, and that way I'll know that you would enjoy more videos on this kind of thing. And uh, feel free to share it with anybody that uh, needs to hear this, because it is way more people than uh, already do a great job introducing themselves. And from this point, I'm going to leave it up to YouTube to decide which of my videos you will benefit from the most. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like stuff like this. And I always like to say, if you can change your mind, you can change your life.